Okay, we're live. Uh, this is Dean with C5 Expedite. Uh, we have Tim Eckhoff and Noah. And how do you pronounce your last name, Noah? Rimkus. Rimkus. Okay. Uh, both of these guys are top drivers with our company. Uh, been with us. Tim, you've been with us almost a year and a half, haven't you? Yeah. And Noah, I think you're like eight months. Four. Oh, four months? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, that was close. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the same calendar year. <laughs> Anyways, we're doing this video it's totally informal um, for you as a brand new driver. Uh, what happens when you leave the yard here? You're in the truck and um, you're by yourself. You're by yourself, and what happens next? So, uh, anyways, let's um, let's start with Tim first, okay? So, Tim, uh, you're. Uh, you, you leave the yard here, and, and where, do they, where do they send you? Where do you go? Where do they normally send you from here? Wherever the dispatch tells me. Okay, okay. So uh, I'll punch in the address on my GPS, Okay. and away we go. Okay, and that could be anywhere in the United States? Could be anywhere, yeah. Okay, all right. And what about Noah? What, what, uh, what was your feelings when you first left the yard here? Where did they send you? Well, they sent me home. Uh, you know, if you, if you, if you pick up, you know, if you pick up your truck on a weekend and you're not going to go out till Monday, they'll probably just send you home mm -hmm. to chill out. And then that, that, uh, Monday morning before eight o'clock, I got right to a truck stop and just waited there. I got to a main central location, you know, that was, uh, kind of close to uh, a bigger, headed towards a bigger city. Okay. So, uh, you're wait so the first is you got to have some patience to wait, yeah. right? Did I get the yes. load? Yeah. Okay. So then once they dispatch you, because uh, they're looking for a load for you. Right. Right. Okay. So once they dispatch you, now you, you put the address in the app and now you're, you're going to the location. Now, mm -hmm. uh, when you get there, what, what are some, you know, well, what, what are some let's things? Let's backtrack real yeah. quick. Um, yeah. Right at 8 o'clock, you're going to get a call from the office, um, whoever the office uh, is in the morning. And they'll, they'll ask you where your location is. Um, and if it's a Monday, they'll ask you your miles and then if you're ready or not. Um, and then after that, then the dispatch will start searching for you. And then uh, as soon as you find a load, then you'll leave. So uh, the eight o'clock call, just make sure you answer that eight o'clock call in the morning because that's important to answer. And one thing I want to mention is that both of these drivers are non-DOT trucks. Mm -hmm. So once you've graduated from the DOT, which has a whole set of rules, DOT rules, which we're not really going to talk about, mm -hmm. Maybe a couple things we'll mention, mm -hmm. but you you get to you want to graduate to the non DOT <clears throat> because there's more money in the non DOT trucks. Yes. Okay. Okay. So um, now, what happens when you? Anything else you want to discuss before you get to a pickup? I mean, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty much it. You're dispatched, and then you just type in the address that the either Clayton or Blake will send you, yep. and you go to that spot. Okay. And you're driving there. So. Let's talk about Selectus when you get on mm -hmm. get on site. Because that's a, that's a tough one that people struggle with. Yep. So, uh, Can I explain that? Uh, for me, as soon as I get on the lot, you know, um, I type in my app, arrived. You'll put load one and then your truck number and done. And it will say you're on site. And from that point on, now you're on site, you know. Um, Which that notifies the customer as well as the office. Yeah, try to do that right away. Don't, don't wait until you try to find the door. As soon as you get on the property, put arrived because you could be searching for 15 minutes trying to find the door, and you want to make sure you do that right away. Now, do you have problems finding doors sometimes? Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes we do. It's sometimes you'll be driving around the whole building looking for the place where you need to go. And so if you can't find the door, what do you do for the location? Usually we try to I, ad advise to find somebody mm -hmm. in the area to... Get some direction. I'll ask random yeah. people walking on the road to see if this is the building that I'm going because some of the buildings do not have markings on them that they're that right. building. They could be right. a complex full of twenty different businesses that you might be going to. Mm -hmm. So I just ask a person, could be anyone, they might not know. Uh, or else you can ask someone in the building, you can try going to a main office, uh, you can even try calling the business if they have a number to that and they'll uh, they'll kinda of direct you to the area. What's the chances of that? Like yeah, one out of one, one out, out of five, one out of six. Okay, I, I wouldn't okay. say it's very much, but it, it does happen. It, it, it does, does happen. It does happen. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it, it becomes enough. less frequent as the longer you drive because and you start to figure stuff. You out. You figure out, yeah. And you might even be at the same location. I think you like going to Iowa. You you know exactly where mm -hmm. you're going. Right. Exactly. So, uh, especially Tim, I'm, I'm sure you've been to the same places. 
over and over. Yes. Um, yes. Probably not all the time, but. Uh, okay, so, and, and that, I'm sure that's, as a brand new driver, that you're, that's going to be kind of scary yep. and frustrating, right? You can't find this load and you're on, and I think you made a valid point to say, hey, make sure you let, select the snow that you're on site, mm -hmm. like, right away. Okay. Um, so, when you go in, when you go into the, the shipping and receiving, it gives you what you look for, or trucks or docks, and so what do you usually say when you go into, go in there? So we text you basically who you're picking up for. So is that what you guys usually do? Yeah, I'll usually tell them I'm here for picking up for whoever. Yeah. And um, my load is going to wherever what yeah. de the destination is, and um, then they usually ask me for a pickup number, something like that. If I have that, I'll give it to them. Mm -hmm. If not, I call Clayton. <laughs> <laughs> and and. You get two copies, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Two copies. I always want to get two copies when oh, we leave. Of your bill of lading. Bill of lading, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You make sure, because uh, I, I deal with it actually more times than not, you know, you just always make sure that you have the two copies. They'll hand you one. They'll hand you two. You sign one and give it to them, mm -hmm. but you got to make sure you leave with two copies. Right. And what's the purpose for that? purpose is because one goes to the customer when you get there, and one goes back to the office mm -hmm. once you get the paperwork in, so... Okay, so now let's uh, let's get your load. It, now, how often do you have to use the ramps? I've never the white trucks. I the white yeah the white yeah the white trucks they don't work for your foot too low. Okay, and even with the ramps, you're six inches too low. Yeah. So does it even pay for us to even have ramps on those trucks? Probably I, not in the I, white ones. I've used them once in the white trucks. Yeah, we used them a couple times. We don't really bid if it's a white truck. We don't really okay. Yeah, okay. it, it needs to be. True dot chi, you just can't. But if you do have to use your ramps, the best way I found out about backing trucks up to docks with them is back your truck all the way up to the dock so it so it so it's setting there, and then you put the ramps um, with the dip right where the tire is, and then you pull forward, you move the ramps into place, and you back up, and then it's perfect. You don't have to go oh. with this trial and error thing. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah, I thought that was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's my idea. <laughs> that was good. But, uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, you don't have to, because it's always irritating looking like you don't know what you're doing in front of all these people at the dock, so right. yeah. it's a good tip. To we try to give them ramp training here. Yeah. And so, but it's not enough, you, mm -hmm. you, because when you get into a live situation, again, you yeah, get those scary different. feelings. It's a little different. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so once you get the load, um, you know, one thing, you know, what about strapping it down? What's Strap, that? I want to talk about strapping it down, and then I want to talk about planning your trip. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, just being aware of your trip. Incoming subspace signal. That's so okay. good. <laughs> this is informal, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> um, when I, as soon as I get loaded, um, as soon as I get the paperwork from, I get loaded, I pull out, out of the way of the ramp. Um, I, I strap everything down, you know, um, just make sure, you know, because if you have to make a quick stop, you don't want 2,000 pounds coming coming yeah, at you, coming you know. At you. Yep. So make sure it's good and you're comfortable with that. Which we've had. We had a driver one time not strap his load down and came right through the yeah. sleeper. It can be so, scary. Mm -hmm. um, but use your own discretion on it because, you know, uh, you know what's going to be safest for you. And then just make sure you put loaded in your app once you get it all in because you're going to want to put in the BOL number into the app um, what load you're on load one uh, and then your truck number okay and then wait you also want to make sure that if the load is kind of top heavy mm -hmm. that you keep it from going side to side okay. right. because it can roll depending on how they have it attached to your pallet mm -hmm. and what about like where the placement in it do you put it like over the axle, or where you you know where, you know, make sure that it's yeah as much as we can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you directing the person loading you where you want it loaded on the yes. truck? Yes. Okay. I do. Yeah. Yes. I so do. you need I to be sure. aware of that as well. Yep. And once you once you get loaded, I'm sure you're going to know how the feel of the truck is yep. once you get loaded a couple times. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So then um, now you're on your way, right? Mm -hmm. So you you put in the app, and now we're going down the road, and um, let's talk about gas. Okay. For planning your trip. Yeah, for planning your trip. Yep. So, so just... yeah, so, uh, I mean, I usually try to find, it depends what, what kind of mileage you like to run with. I don't like running the truck underneath a quarter tank, uh, just for personal reasons. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, plan out your trips. You can usually get around 200 miles per tank. And, okay. 
I, each, I try to fill up every 200 miles in each pilot from there. So do you normally go to pilot first? Do you, look, do you seek out the pilots first or not? What do you seek out? Me, personally, wherever I can get fill, because usually I'm quite a bit below a quarter of a tank. <laughs> <laughs> but we also need to discuss that our older trucks are running gas, yes. and the newer trucks are running diesel. Right. Yes. And I do want to talk about the diesel with the death, right? So yeah. you have problems. I know we have problems with the credit card authorizing the death. Has that been fixed? No. Um, so the that Voyager card will not let me buy the death without. No. no. I wonder if there's a, if there's if there's a reason why on the card. Uh, it just said so. product decline. So. Okay, then we need. I will check into that. But now, if you're at pilot, yep. the pilot card will let you use the death. Okay. Get have you had any situations with that? I, mean, I don't have death in my truck. You don't. You're, I have the gas. gas. You got the gas. gas. Truck. Okay. One more. You, um, but you're moving to a diesel. Yeah, I am moving to the diesel. So then you have to be aware of the death. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now the diesel you can get between 350 and 400 miles on a tank full of fuel, so yeah. you don't have to stop quite as often. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. But the the death, uh, if you don't fill that up, it will it's reduce your truck engine. Um, I don't know to what speed, but. It'll uh, give you a warning at 500 miles. Okay. Bef uh, you, when you have 500 miles, still it's empty. Okay. And so you've got a little time. It's not like it's just gonna do it and shut you down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So just that's good for you. It's yeah. good for the that's video. But it's good for you to. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So um, now, what about what about showers and pilots and points and things like that? Mm -hmm. uh, tell tell us how that is working for you. Well, you shower. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will uh, stop at pilot. Yeah. And, okay. Um, but I've had somewhat of an issue of <clears throat> adding the shower credits. How come? They say you've got to get like a thousand gallons of fuel first. Really? Yeah. Oh, did you sign up for the expediting card? Mm hmm. So so usually on the on the website or on, when they tell you, um, it says it's every seventeen gallons is half a point. Okay. Really? And then yeah, yeah, every seventeen gallons. That's what I gallons. thought. It was like a it was like a. I usually can accumulate it up to about six. Oh, like a point. tank, a tank would be um, would be a half a half a point. Yep. So how many points is a? A shower is one. Oh, one yeah. point. So two fill-ups, fill you get one, one yeah. shower. And well, usually you can talk do that to somebody in. then. Right. Yeah, I'd call back But if you're not doing two fill-ups, that. that's another thing. Um, yeah. That's another thing. Right. <laughs> Once you do uh, get a pilot, make sure you go in and get a professional driver card and then call that company and say you're an expediter because that professional driver card is for the semi-drivers and you're not going to fuel up as much as them mm -hmm. or else you won't get the same amount of points. Right, so that maybe that's what you got to do. That, that could be. So you got to get the expediter you card. Have to, you have to call in and tell them that you're an expediter and switch your card over to that because you can't do it mm -hmm. any, any way else. Mm -hmm. So. And again, be. this is why we're doing this video, just so you can learn the, the tricks and tips about Even being the on the road. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Even the veterans can learn. Good. Um, and if you if you reserve your shower through your app, you get a hundred points to use in store credit. So a point is a cent. You accumulate points. Um, so it's a buck. It's a buck every time you reserve a shower through your app. Wow. Which oh. you can use to fo for food. And mm -hmm. you know, the first couple weeks for me, you know, yeah. was a little bit hard to adjust, and that was those points really helped me out yeah. getting that extra, you yeah. know, snack I needed or water right. or something coffee, like that. Cup of coffee or whatever. Yeah, so yeah, if you drink coffee, then right, that's cool. Okay, uh, um, so I know we have the pilot card and we have the shell card, and we have the Voyager card, and loves. huh, and loves and loves, loves. card. Okay. So what do you guys usually look for with the Voyager card? How do you guys find your locations? For the Voyager card. Oh, to put it in. Uh, yeah, like yeah. like which uh, gas stations take the Voyager card? I I haven't had a problem with any of them besides right. um a Tex Texedo Texedo up in it was up in Nebraska. But I they'll, had a they'll with it. basically take anything. Yeah. yeah, they'll go anywhere. Well, Voyager card will go anywhere. I haven't had a problem. Yeah, the only reason cool. you, the really why you're doing the pilot is because of the points for the showers. Right. So otherwise showers are like twelve fifty, aren't they? Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so you want the free points, and that's yeah, why you should go to the pilots, right? But if but you absolutely Voyager, need a shower, they will give you one if you if you if you ask over and over again. <laughs> they will give you one. <laughs> <laughs> but the Voyager card will be taken. That goes anywhere, right? Yep. Yes. That's yeah. cool. I, yep. Wow. 
Um, you can only use it three times a day at the, from this from when this video was made. You mm -hmm. can only use it three times. So they will probably update that in the future. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure Steph will uh, make that available more. Mm -hmm. what, um, what do you think? What do you think should be? I think it should just be any um, amount, really. Okay. I mean, okay. Or discretion. Well, even if we go up to four times, really. Yeah. yeah. I've had a couple times where. I you know, went the fuel up and I wouldn't take the car. Yep. Okay. Oh, I didn't realize at the time you could only use it three times. Yeah. And so let's that. talk about cash because we do reimburse for cash. Yep. So in those cases, you pay cash and we will reimburse you that following you paid it yep. the next week. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, let's just talk about your the book, like the registration and the documents, your insurance and the DOT and um, so with these trucks, All you don't have info. yeah, you don't have to stop at the at the weigh scales, no, nope. right, no, nope. and um, but the trucks are derated, so there's a special sticker on there. So you got to make sure that, that sticker stays on the truck. Yep, yeah. right. Yep. Yeah. Um, anything, anything. Um, we still like we we really want our drivers doing weekly inspections. So are you guys doing that? Yes. Yep. Oh, okay. Make sure you have sheets. If you run out of sheets, um, if you're in a non DOT, you can put it into your. Um, Big Road app, there's a truck inspection on your Big Road app that you can actually put inspections in. If you're and in DOT. If you're in DOT. Yep. Otherwise, um, you can get paper paper at the pilot. You get yep. three bucks a yep. book, I think it is. Yep. And you can do you that your as well. inspections on that. Yep. And then cam scan that. Let's talk about cam scan, because sometimes we have drivers that just do not cam scan. They get the, they clear get documents. the apps confused. Yeah, what do you think that is? Have you guys had any problems with the cam scan? I mean, I've put fingers in a few of my pictures. Yeah, no fingers. But, I mean, <laughs> no fingers. Uh, yeah. but obviously, you can just retake I had a problem with it showing up bright. You know, the image came out real dark. Yeah. And then I figured out how I could adjust that. So. Okay. And make sure to take it directly over top, over. not back at an angle, mm -hmm. directly over top of the paper, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah, sometimes we'll get drivers that are just, they do not sell, send clear BOLs. And that's how you get paid on the load. That's how, you, that's how we get paid. Yeah, if you want to get paid, make sure those pictures are clear. Um, Sometimes you get, when they sign the BOL, your destination, they will just kind of scribble something on there. Yeah. So you need to get a name. And print it. Yes. Print it. Oh, Even yeah. though you ask or, them yes. to print, they'll just yeah. kind of scribble something down. And yeah. What okay. I do is that when if they write something and I think I know what their name is, I'll, I'll confirm. You know, mm -hmm. oh, oh, Jerry Reed. Mm -hmm. And then they'll confirm that. So mm -hmm. sometimes I'll just make it more clear. Okay, yeah. I got their signature, but I'm going to make it clear that it's Jerry Reed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. So and of course, you sign your name, it's a good way to it, confirm. put your truck number on it, date it. Yep. Right. So I ran into one situation where the guy just scribbled something on there and I asked him his name, you know, to print, yeah. sign, date. And he said, Well, I've done this enough times and that's good enough. That's all you need. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he was not a very happy camper. So what did you do in that case? Did you put anything on there that the guy would not give the name? Um, I just you? tried to figure it out the best I could. And I think that's what I entered in. That. Okay. Uh, actually, that time I think I put a question mark for his yep. name. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because I absolutely could not make out anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he wouldn't give me the information I needed. So. Yeah. So it's okay for you to ask, like, ask him even his first name, and you can print it on there. Yep. You know, you can't sign for him, but you can print it on there for him if he's yeah. not willing. You can write his name. But I think just once I ran into that situation. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, is there anything we need to talk about the DOT or registration? Is there anything you want to mention or advise the drivers? You know, we want to make. Sh um, we ran into a case that the guy guy forgot the booklet at home. Yeah. So do so not. You don't take the booklet out of the truck. No, yeah, you leave it in the truck. At yeah. Normally, time. when you come here, we normally take the booklet and the gas cards from you. Just so so it's, secure that. It's good to have a separate booklet for your paperwork, so that you don't have to have the paperwork in that booklet and then be taking it out of the truck. Yeah. So I think that's important to have yeah. a separate. It's pretty cheap to just buy a, a folder, like a, a good folder from Office Max or something, and keep all your paperwork in there. And it keeps it organized and not crumpled up and nice looking too. So. And it's good to keep. Keep your BOLs because um, yeah, we need the BOLs. If it's, if it's yeah. not if it's not clear, you might need to resend it. So mm -hmm. make sure you keep track of your BOLs. Yeah, and I send those resend in. It. Some everybody does something different. Some some will fax them to us. Some will mail them to us once a week, every other week. I mean, 
I know Some you just will dropped, send your wife to drop, drop, to, drop, them, drop them off. Drop them off. <laughs> 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 what about you? How do you get I, through it? I bring them in whenever you, I'm when in town. When your wife drops yeah. them off? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, no, whenever I'm in town, I usually just drop them off. I always make sure my VLOs are super clear, and I've never had an issue with it. If you can put them in every week, fax them and stuff, you can. Mm -hmm. um, I just, yeah. whenever I'm back into town, I just bring in my folder, and I give them all the my receipts and everything from that previous two or three weeks. Okay. Um, what about tolls? Let's just talk about tolls, because uh, there's some some areas, and I, we're seeing this too, especially in the Kansas City Turnpike or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we'll get we'll get yeah, we're paying more money for tolls, so we want the drivers. We want you. We'll reimburse you. Yeah. So, anything? Any suggestion on tolls? I mean, just have cash on you. Try to have cash on you. If you don't have cash on you. Um, it, it depends. Like, the turnpikes are pretty easy because in the turnpikes you have service stations. So you can go through the first toll, they'll give you a ticket, they don't charge you that first toll, but they'll mm -hmm. have service stations where you can go off and get cash. Get cash. Because yeah. if you try to get off before, they're going to charge you to get off, and then right. you don't have the money for it. They have so to just take the ticket and then go. Take the ticket, go to a service station, get an ATM, and take 20 bucks out. You know, but we do have the I-Pass, which uh, works right with the Easy Pass. Yep. So it, it's through Chicago all the way out east. And down through West Virginia and Virginia. Yep. It doesn't so it work. covers a big area. Georgia has Peach Pass. Doesn't work. Uh, wait, it might work for Peach Pass. Kansas, uh, Kansas, it doesn't work mm -hmm. down there. Florida, it doesn't work in the Florida Turnpike. Texas Turnpike. and Oklahoma, it doesn't. Yep. Work. So you just you just gotta you just gotta really watch out for it. Mm -hmm. But there's there's uh, uh, much less in those states. Yep. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And just Where, be mindful if you're going there to bring cash. Yep. Yeah. Mm. And now, versus Pennsylvania, no matter where you're at, you're running tolls yeah so we're about 21 minutes so okay. let's let's wrap it up within nine minutes okay um, let's talk about food and exercise okay what's your thoughts on that well I started out McDonald's was kind of my go-to place but I learned mm -hmm. fairly quickly that mm -hmm. no yeah step. get sick of McDonald's <laughs> right so what do you do for food now Tim uh, I'll usually you know, if I'm at like Walmart or something, I'll grab something. Some groceries. Um, some groceries, but yeah. um, okay. mostly like Perkins or Denny's. Yeah, yeah. they're pretty okay. good. Okay. Um, Denny's, you can get some decent, healthy choices too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I like to, because, you know, when you start, you might not have uh, a whole lot of money to go out and eat stuff anyways. Um, a really good option, Pilot has $2 salads that are really good. They're healthy. They're really huge too. Mm -hmm. They could uh, pull you over. Um, I go to Walmart and get stacks of fruit. I get a bunch of strawberries, blueberries. Yeah. Uh, banana bananas are really awesome for the road. They fill you up. Mm -hmm. uh, grapes are awesome because they fill you up too. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and Pilot has some really good snacks too. They usually have like a buy one, get one free. Um, and then you can also use your points. Um, but trying to eat healthy, I mean, for the most part, I just try to get a ton of fruit from Walmart. Mm -hmm. Eat salads every once in a while, you know. And, and that's what's uh, nice that about road. these trucks. They're not like a big, the big semis. You can take these to a Walmart very easily, yeah. or yeah. Grocery, yeah. Store. You know, grocery store, or something like be that. Be mindful of signs in WalMarts and stuff mm -hmm. about trailer and tractor parking. But yeah, yep. Yeah. Let's bring it up right now. That's a yeah. good point. So uh, I was over in North Carolina, and I parked my truck there for a day, and um, I just I didn't notice the signs because I've never had a problem at a Walmart, and um, my car my truck ended up having a boot on it, and that was a that was a five hundred dollar mistake on my part. And had you not got it off right away. It would have been fifteen. It would have been fifteen hundred dollars to get it off. Wow. Yeah. So, so that's a big. It probably makes you feel good to talk about it and yeah. help other people. Yeah. And like most definitely. Read signs. Yeah. Make and, sure you, you know, read signs. You and know. even height signs too. Even that you know bridges and everything. Even right. if because in my like, like I, remember, attention, I, right? I remember glancing at it and seeing trailer tractor parking, but I'm not a trailer or tractor. I can right. park your spot, so I didn't think twice about it. Yeah. Go with your better feeling. Go across the street to like a home Home Depot's. I've never had a problem with. Obviously, read the signs there or too. Or ask somebody. Ask somebody. Get permission. You know, go inside. Yeah, yeah, that's what I usually do. Get permission. Make sure. Uh, All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, anything on exercise, do you guys? Uh, uh, is there anything you carry in the truck? Do you carry something to so go go walking or anything? Yeah, you take a um, walk. I mean, you. Uh, if you to have the a bathroom and back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to start an exercise program, guys. <laughs> um, I don't know, in the morning, um, I just do some light stuff. I have an Anytime Fitness uh, okay, membership. Okay, that's, that's good. I was going to mention that. Anytime okay. Fitness is everywhere yeah, in so America. How much do you pay for that? Uh, it's like 50 bucks a month. Okay. It's it's not it's not a lot for what you get. And there's showers there, too. There's showers there as well yeah. that you can also take. Um, if you do, just make sure you bring towels along with you. Sometimes the Anytime Fitnesses do not have towels. Have towels. No. 
But other than that, they're good showers, they're clean showers. Um, in the mornings, I mean, you have enough truck space to do sit-ups and push-ups every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can... Some truck stops lunches. have, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever come across them, but some truck stops have little... Exercise rooms? Oh, I haven't seen any of those. In, in, the in Laredo, lunch. especially. Yeah. <laughs> I, I spent a few days in Laredo. They got an exercise in the truck stops, yeah. Yeah, or else you can take laps around the truck stops. Okay, back to the food. We used to have drivers that would carry, the, we have, you know, the generators and mm -hmm. an electric cooking do you guys do any of that at all? I'm, I'm going to start. But okay. I haven't. You haven't. No. Okay. Okay. I mean, he had a frying pan. He cooked chicken in there and, you know. Berry. Also, huh? Not, not Barry, but also uh, Casey did, too. Oh, Casey did, yeah. too. Yeah. Barry had his truck set up with fishing rods and other things. Yeah. You know? A different so, jacket for each type of weather. Yeah, he had different kind of weather. He had different jackets. Jackets, that's an important thing to yeah. have, too. And bedding. Okay, let's talk about bedding for the back of the truck, especially in the white trucks. I know the, the yellow ones have sleepers, but... So what are you guys doing for bedding? I know you have a pretty good sized bed. Yes. In there, it's a fold up bed, right? It's a fold up uh, camping cot. Okay. Okay. Bed. okay. What do you use, Noah? I have a foam. I used to. I had a foam mattress that okay. plays out pretty well. Okay. Do you guys stay warm in there? I mean. I mean, right now it's staying yeah, cool. Yeah, no. It's cool as <laughs> year. Okay. What about when we get to winter time? What do you What do you do to keep warm? Well. It was an experiment last year. Okay. I don't know. I tried a propane heater. I tried the generator. Mm -hmm. um, this year I'm going with electric. Okay. What does that mean? Electric. Electric what? Electric heater. Uh, or electric? electric heater. And what's going to power the electric heater? Uh, the generator. Yeah. A, a power inverter. Oh, you're going to have. Yeah, and then okay. I'm gonna have separate batteries, so I don't need to hook it into the truck. Yeah. Okay. And then I just got to figure out how to recharge those batteries. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, I have a small charger. Why not the generator and the heater? Does that not work? Um, well, the generator, I tried that last, <clears throat> excuse me, mm -hmm. last year, and it wouldn't power two heaters. Two heaters, okay, yeah. especially with being in the open back there. Yeah. It's not like the sleeper. The sleeper, the one heater is plenty. Right, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. also, I uh, put a tarp. Tarp across. Uh, across. And that helped? Yes. I would think so. Because it just cuts off, um, so you're not trying to heat the whole truck. So, th I'm just thinking, you know, especially coming in the wintertime, like you saying, the tarp tarps off half of that truck. Yep, I got I got one of those. I use it for okay. the summer when it gets really hot because it's yeah. really hard to keep that box cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are you, are you how are you keeping it cool? Keeping it cool. I I, I mean truck. if it's super hot, I got to keep the truck ru running. running. Yep. And, and run, keep what's with the new going. diesel trucks? Is with the what's your experience with that? With keeping the truck running. Yeah. Oh, it'll keep it cool. It'll it'll keep do you feel safer though with the diesel? Than, yeah. Uh, Gas up, probably. But you keep yes. a, an alarm in the back. Yes, I have a carbon monoxide alarm. And that's yeah. definitely right. I'm really glad you brought that up. Yeah. That's great. So, yeah. yes, definitely get a carbon monoxide that's alarm. Yeah. 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 And um, I was parked overnight at one place. There was a guy that came in after I already went to sleep. And I, he'd given off some really bad fumes. Oh, yeah. And um, oh, no. you know, I had wasn't running my truck. But all of a sudden in the morning... My carbon monoxide detector went off the alarm. Yeah. yeah. And so the only thing I could think of it, it had to be from his truck yeah, next his truck. door, sure. sitting right next to me. There was a, a so, couple yeah. months ago, another company had a driver actually died because of that. Mm -hmm. 20, so, 25, I think. Because of another I think truck. Because yeah, of his old. truck. So his maybe we should driver. talk about where to park. I mean, I know in some areas I've seen some, because it was a smaller truck, they parked. In corners of not where all the semis are, well, but like campers or right. pickup trucks. Campers, pickup trucks. Yep, next to a tree, you know, shaded that kind of yeah. stuff. Well, right. it's to, yeah, it's supposed to be you're gonna use your generator. You gotta have a little room. I mean, mm -hmm. based on not just you two guys, but I've seen other drivers right the last few years that some of them have just really enjoyed the road and that where they're doing their own cooking for health reasons yeah. and watching where they park. Um, you know, we've had. A driver just loved going to amusement parks. He would try to find every amusement park that he could while he was on there. I mean, he really enjoyed. That's awesome. You know, I and I think with longevity, whatever you're doing, Tim, what I feel you're doing it right because you're 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 really making there's longevity here. So I mean, either you're really a hard worker or you love the road. I don't know what it is. Oh, I do but, love the road. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So and you're a hard worker. So. You're a hard worker. <laughs> yeah. Which which I want to talk about attitude. Okay. And like Clayton said, we need to talk about it three times. So, and we've seen it so much. Attitude is is key in this business. But we talked about uh, Noah brought up that sometimes you might have to take a cheaper load, mm -hmm. but that can take you to 
somewhere else that you can get a really nice load. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you n never know where it's going to take you. Just have a good attitude about it. Mm -hmm. um, and trust the dispatchers. Yeah. yeah trusting the dispatchers is huge. Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not. He said, he depends if his name is Blake or Clayton. <laughs> <laughs> we won't say which one's which. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, uh, for the most part, with me, I just know that I've had super small loads the whole week and still had a really good paycheck if I were the type of guy who just was getting mad about those super small loads. Mm -hmm. And just, I was finally just like, I'm just, I'm going to wait for a bigger load. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll pass on this one. If I would have done that, I probably would have made less money than just taking all those smaller loads. Right. So just having a good attitude and trusting that they know what they're doing. Like, they're not, they're, you know, they're not not giving you the best loads. Like, they're trying to find you the best loads because mm -hmm. when they make more money, you make more money. Yep. So you got to think about it like that. They're not trying to ever. And we're not always able to pick from a better roses. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Which yep. rose we want. Sometimes yeah. it's only thorn bushes. <laughs> <laughs> um, something I just think of, we've had several instances where drivers lock their keys in their trucks. Right? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So just Every time be I get out, careful. I look at my keys before I shut the door. Oh, that's, that's a really good advice. Yeah, too. you know, and it's easy to do. I've locked keys in my car. Oh, you spend else. a lot of time in the truck. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. so it just, can happen easy. If yeah. you leave the truck, maybe check your pockets or just make Every sure you got the keys. Every time. I've done that once. Leave it some guys. Uh, we'll get a spare just to open the truck um, or get, get a magnet mm -hmm. and put it somewhere on the truck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. so, so they can at least get into the truck and access their phone or mm -hmm. whatever they left in there. Uh, just for a second time, let's talk about dealing with dispatch in the office. Is there anything that you want to talk about or we, that you know they need to know as a driver when they're calling the office or knowing the hours? What to expect. And, you know, and, yeah. yeah, what to expect. I mean... For the most part, like, if you're in a good mood, they're in a good mood, if, you know, uh, just respect them and respect what they have to say. Everyone has their days, and we understand that, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, expect calls maybe at, maybe every once in a while at times that you don't exactly like, and it's going to happen every <laughs> once in a while, mm -hmm. but uh, you just have to know that they're doing their best to mm -hmm. make sure everything's running smoothly. And that's too. even with the nighttime staff. They yeah. might end up waking you up or whatever, mm -hmm. just... Try not to if, throw the phone at the wall. Exactly. And exactly. if you can, if you're up front and communicate, we know what's going on or what to expect from you, then we know how to handle that situation. Exactly. So, I think that's key is being up front. Yeah. And something that works well when I come in at eight o'clock, I mm -hmm. have several drivers that will text me before they go to sleep, mm -hmm. and it might be in the middle of the night, and I will, won't respond. But I see it in the morning. Yeah. I'm not ready until eleven a.m. Okay, that's great. I won't bother you before eleven a.m. Yeah. So that's something that works well from dispatchers. Perspective. Because otherwise, on our on our end, things going through our head is, is he okay? You know, carbon monoxide thing. If he's sleeping in the truck, mm -hmm. um, so you have a personal reason you're so, sick or whatever. And so if we yeah. don't have any communication, we you know we're worried about you, and then we're gonna think the worst. And then we're gonna try to get a hold of you more and more, which mm -hmm. might frustrate you. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Communication is key. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you probably have better sleep knowing that you communicated when you're going to be ready so you don't have to worry about mm -hmm. being more mm -hmm. out. Yeah, you just be more, you're more comfortable sleeping. Let's talk about smartphones, okay? Because um, we've had trouble in the past for drivers. Either A, don't know how to use their phone, or they don't have enough data. So what's the best plan... Yeah, what kind of phone do you guys have? Yeah, I have AT&T. Okay. I get service everywhere besides Iowa and Minnesota sometimes. Okay. What do you have, Tim? I have Verizon now. <laughs> I started out with U.S. Cellular, <laughs> but they did not work outside of Wisconsin very well at all. Oh, mm -hmm. really? I had a lot of issues. With Verizon? U.S. Cellular. With uh, U.S. Oh, US cellular. cellular. yeah, yeah. Verizon, I haven't had too much trouble. Yeah, I switched to Verizon, too. Yeah. If you're the only person on the plan, a good one is Straight Talk mm -hmm. from Walmart. Yeah. You got multiple people. What do you mean if you're the only person on the planet? Like if you're paying for three people on Straight Talk, it's oh. going to be expensive. Oh, you're only, only, but if oh, you're only paying yeah. for yourself. Okay. You, can, you can get basically Verizon coverage on Straight Talk. Yep. Unlimited. And limited yeah. for like 45 bucks a month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about uh, getting somewhere and you don't have a pro number or a BOL. You don't have something. It, uh, what do you recommend using? Well, I always look, and if I'm still at the location, because sometimes you don't really realize it until after you're gone mm -hmm. and you and you go pull away to do all your stuff and you don't realize it uh, I try to go back in and get all that stuff if they can't offer it um, uh, dispatch always just says use the use the today's date okay 
as a pro number. Yeah. Right. Yes. But look That's for a BOL, a shipper's number, PO number, pro number. There's mm -hmm. nothing just use today's date. Mm -hmm. uh, just for documentation. Okay, let's talk about Active Arrow. Because uh, I know we brought that up before. Uh, yeah, if you're doing any runs for Active Arrow, make sure you confirm your part numbers. Mm -hmm. um, once you're with loaded. the office, once you're loaded. You don't need to call like you used to. Nope. Okay. Um, okay. Um, just final comments. Uh, again, I, I really want to stress attitude from my perspective. I've seen really good drivers that have good attitudes. They're going to stay here for a long, long time with us. We're going to try to reward you. And you yeah. advance so much quicker. Yeah. It's it just a good attitude. Mm -hmm. A good attitude, you can just really get altitude with attitude. Mm -hmm. So you could have two two drivers doing about the same same mileage or revenue per week, but the guy with a good attitude is always gonna gonna get that best truck first. Yeah. Yep. And I guess if you're not happy with us for some other reason, we, we need to know about it. Like mm -hmm. communicate with us if right. there's something. Just talk to us. We're we're not we're just human beings too. We're exactly. you know we're not perfect, right? So yep. You know. Um, Okay, any final thoughts? Anything that a new driver should know? If I was a new driver, Tim, which, what's the what's top thing I should really pay attention to? Besides anything else we talked about. Just be safe out there and have fun. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. How about you? Um, I'm going to go towards the whole money side of it. If you want to make a lot of money, and just be coachable, uh, be teachable, and just, just go with the flow and have a good attitude. Uh, that's what gets you a lot of places. So, okay, Clay, anything? Uh, attitude. That's <laughs> attitude. really it. Fourth time. time. You gotta Fourth have time. a good attitude. Right. That's true. And and respect is a, is a big one. It's huge. And we're saying it's even know, for customers too. Like not just dispatch. Respect the people that everybody are in your surroundings. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah you, everybody. If you're the companies you're working yeah. for. Exactly. If you're respectful for the people you're picking up for, they'll probably load you faster. If you're pick, yeah. if you're respectful for the people like unloading you, they're probably gonna unload you faster. The whole day is gonna go by way easier. Mm -hmm. so, and you're going to be happier at the end of the day anyways. And Blake, I know you had a lot of repairs. So we didn't hit on repairs. So mm -hmm. any any comments on repairs? Um, Say you break down, you know. Well, number one, just pay attention to your truck. And and if something isn't right with it, you probably want to let us know immediately because if we catch it sooner, it's going to be a better, easier repair. Yep. And um, and you're going to, and, you're, and we won't have to put as much money, so your bonus yep. is going to be better. Yep, mm -hmm. and you can get back out on the road sooner. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, you know, there might be times where we ask you the same question 10 times in a day, but mm -hmm. we've got 15 trucks, and so yeah. we, we, we can't always remember everything the first time. Right. So just be patient and help us work through it and try to diagnose what's going on. And I like what Clayton said before, there's always a solution to a problem. Yep. If there's a problem, you just got to figure out what the solution is. Mm -hmm. There's always a solution. Yep. And, and I want to say for like Tim, because Tim's been with us the longest, Tim always gets the new trucks, right? Yes. So do you have to worry about repairs? No, I don't. No. <laughs> so, Not usually. Every once in a while. And, 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 <laughs> and, how, and what does it do for your bonus? You know you're going to bonus, right? Yes. So even if you start in an old truck, which you did, you were in an old truck when you yes, started. Yes, did. You maintain a good attitude, and you have continually moved up to better and better trucks. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's really the secret of the game is, again, for the fourth and fifth time, the attitude. <laughs> but you've proved, both of you have proven it. And both of you are, are really good, like, this last month, you two were just off like five bucks. In, really? Yeah, in production. <laughs> so. <laughs> it was very, very close. You still won the race, Tim. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now I got to sweat the competition. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got to know I'm down here. Yeah, yeah. I'm down here. So, okay. Uh, I think that's it, right? Mm, Thank you for nice. doing it. So, hopefully, yeah, I'll right. help the, the new drivers. Awesome. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm, bye bye.